Okay, how's everybody doing? So this is a quick tutorial on how to uh, get your Jeanette photos Tumblr ready. These advices are from actual industry professionals and keep in mind that the resolution of the screen has been reduced so I'm gonna do my best to do this. The software I'll be using is Photoshop CS3 but you can really use any other photo editing software. It is a concept that really matters especially when you're trying to block for something like Tumblr and not printing for a magazine. So I just loaded up a photo of Jeanette here and this is the one that I'm gonna be working with but really you can use any photo that you think is pretty good. So what we're gonna do is, Jeanette is already beautiful but a lot of times the photo quality isn't really up to par when it comes to at least what the Tumblr people are expecting to reblog. So, uh, okay the first thing I'm gonna do obviously is zoom in right okay this is a pretty high res and a pretty uh, low res screen at the moment so again bear with me let me go ahead and create a new file paste it of course so there's my new file again I'm going to zoom into this one all right, so a couple of things we want to do is, uh, although this already has been taken on a pretty high quality camera, but there are certain things that I like to change about it. Uh, the editor did an amazing job, but for me, her hair looks a little bit dead. So what I'm going to do is first things first, I'm going to make a couple of layers. The way I'm doing that right here is just I just select it all and copy paste it over and over again. I have a couple of backups here just in case I wanted to go back. And I am going to adjust and increase some saturations on here. Again, these are really basic things. And right now, I'm not concerned about anything else, okay? I know right now everything else looks really bright, but again, I'm not concerned about anything else. I'm just concerned about the hair at the moment. And I guess that looks about right. I'm not sure how this looks on YouTube, but I hope it's coming out right on the YouTube as well. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, I like to do it this way. Uh, I like to put the old layer on top of new layer so that the old things can come back. And let me go ahead and zoom out real quick. right? And I'm going to use the eraser tool. And what I'm going to do is literally erase her hair just enough right, so that the new colored hair shines right through. Whoops right just like that just to brighten up her hair a little bit now what's really cool about this tactic of course is that now if I make any other changes to her uh, photo her hair will actually still remain intact to the color that I wanted it to be for example like uh, let's say I still want to increase some saturation to bring out the colors in her shirt and maybe some of the lipsticks and maybe the, some of the cheekbone features I could actually just increase it just a tad and the hair will still remain the same. All right, uh, one of the other things we want to do, as always, is to take care of these wrinkles. Now, Jeanette has these adorable little, almost like a dimple-like thing here. And what I'm gonna use is a clone tool. Now, clone tool basically clones one location to another. Like what, it, so uh, the skin is what I like to clone and then go over it and what it does is it kind of copies this part of the skin to this part of the skin but only at 47 percent so it's not a hundred percent so it actually kind of reduces the amount right here too I don't want to get rid of it entirely I just want to reduce it you know okay maybe a little more here there you go uh-huh now what I want to do is add some dimension to this photo and the way we do that uh, there are many ways to do it but one of the ways I like to do it is I like to create a new layer right so we have a blank layer and it's gonna look like I am totally destroying and vandalizing her face for a second but please bear with me on, as to what I'm doing because a lot of times the photo a lot of times the photos looks one kinda two-dimensional and what I'm doing right now is actually just coloring in where the shadows ought to be. 
like around here, maybe even a smaller size here. And I'm using this so that you guys could visually see some of the things uh, right here, maybe a little bit of the chin, maybe the cheekbone here, right? And I am going to use what's called Glossian Blur right here. And you don't want to do it too much. You just want it to be kind of a natural thing here. And you might be looking at this going, what's so natural about this? And what I'm going to do is use overlay. And I'm going to reduce opacity here. If you notice, this is the maximum, if you will. And this is the minimum or none at all. And I'm going to just add a dimension to it. If you notice, the shadow, I could go all the way here, but then that looks like something is kind of growing on her. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe around here. I don't know how it looks out on... I don't know how that looks on YouTube, but it looks pretty good like this. Okay, so we added a bit of a dimension to her face, which obviously exists in real life, but for some reason, certain photos or certain editing process tends to remove those kind of features. All right, the next thing we are going to focus on is actually one of the most important parts of any kind of photo, and those are the eyes. And it's one of the harder parts to really... Uh, Master. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two layers, actually, just know that, and I am going to erase the eyes. Okay, so you're only seeing, if you will, I erase the eyes on both layers. So literally all you're seeing is the eyes from this layer right here. And I'm going to make these two visible, right? Okay. Having said that, so all I need to do is edit this particular layer. And I, again, I'm going to copy paste this and add another layer. Okay. So the layer six is the one that's being shown, the eyes. So I'm going to zoom into the eyes a little bit. And what I am going to do is use an unsharp mask to try and make it sharper. Um, the eyes tend to be really important in making someone, let's say, look attractive in a photo. So here we go. So I just sharpened it up a little bit. And I, again, I don't know how this looks on YouTube, but maybe this before and after might help. I don't know. But... It looks pretty good from here. Another thing that we're going to do is try and remove some of that shadow. And I'm just going to use a shadow detail on here. There's a lot of manual ways to do it. But I'm going to use it this way. Now, you could actually even color in her eye. Let's say I want to give Jeanette McCurdy blue eyes here, uh, bluer eyes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. Yet again, wait, did I do that already? Yes, I did. So layer seven, and I am going to just draw in, not necessarily the pupil, but around the pupil. Let me go ahead and try and find the brush size that I like. And again, I'm going to uh, use the overlay feature. And then zoom out, supposed to zoom out, all right. So there's our eye, and I'm going to reduce it from minimum and work my way up, and it'll give her kind of a bluer eye. Now, you can use this to enhance her eyes in any way you wish, but definitely uh, you would rather put this on Tumblr than, let's say, this on Tumblr. It, this one. Now, I did this in a matter of a few minutes. If I spent like maybe an hour or two on it, it would look a lot more fantastic and you know allows me to really get in depth. But here you go. Uh, basic, simple things that you want to remember is like, you, you know, you want really bright and bold colors. If you want to smoothen out all the colors and then, uh, if you will, uh, make the light and the shadow kind of blend, it'll have a little more of an exotic look to it. And if you want to make the shadow and light really contrast it'll have a really nice bold look to it it really depends on what you want so here you go i think this one after a few more hours will be ready for tumblr
move this out of the way. There you go.